Hi friends, it's Tina Willison from Our Blooming Catholic Life. And I'm sorry, we've left off this Lexio Divina for far too long. I was sick and in bed for over a week, which is kind of ironic because we were doing the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 9, where, you know, Jesus puts a little child and says, you must become like a little child. And I was, I was very dependent on others to bring me popsicles and pudding and gelatin <laughs> and little drinks and things. And I'm sorry if you still hear my tummy rumbling or something. I'm definitely not 100%, but I wanted to come in and look at this with you. So we're going to pick up at the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 9. And I do believe that we should be up to verses 57. And this was 57 to the end. So let's end this together, friends. I know we didn't do three on every scripture, but let's let's jump in here. Jesus had turned his face towards Jerusalem, I believe, and the others were were not sure what was going on. And, uh, you know, they went to the Samaritans to, to prepare way for him, and they did not receive those messengers. They were afraid because his face was of one going to Jerusalem. And I never found out what that expression means. Hopefully I'll be able to have some time in the future to look that up. But here we have verses 57 through 62. So let us begin again, for up till now we have done nothing, and my book is downstairs. I don't know if I can pull it off. Uh, I think I'm doing the closing prayer in my head, so I'll, let's just open up with a prayer. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Good and gracious God, God who are good, all good and every good. As we read this scripture together, open our minds, open our hearts, open our lips. Give us right faith, certain hope, truth, knowledge, and the ability, Lord, to hear and do your holy will. In Jesus' name we pray. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. <coughs> oh, I didn't check the... I always check the volume on here. If I check the volume on here, at this point, um, I hit one of those buttons, it's going to stop the video. I've done done that before. Let's not make that mistake again. Okay, sorry. And it came to pass, as they walked in the way, that a certain man said to him, I will follow thee wherever thou goest. And Jesus said to him, The foxes have their holes, and the birds of the air nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. But he said to another, Follow me. And he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and to bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow thee, Lord, but let me first take leave of them that are at my house. Jesus said to him, No man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And it came to pass, as they walked in the way, that a certain man said to him, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Jesus said to him, The foxes have their holes, and the birds the air nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. But he said to another, Follow me. And he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and to bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow thee, Lord, but first let me take leave of them that are at my house. And Jesus said to him, No man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Hmm. Interesting. So we have three young men here, two who are choosing to follow Jesus, and another one that Jesus actually outright chooses and calls. And it doesn't sound like any of them follow him. I'm not sure again I'm coming off a week's worth of bed rest here. Or is Jesus just warning him and you know I'll follow thee wherever you go and Jesus is like it's not going to be easy. Not going to be easy. And the next one He's saying, go and let me bury my father. And we know that is a corporal work of mercy that was done in ancient times, um, done throughout the Old Testament, we see it. And Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. 
what does that one mean? There's no, no, no tailbing here. I don't have my compendium in hand. We're kind of the blind here. But interesting that Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. He's telling them about this great and beautiful new life. That's what I hear. Interesting. The last one says, I will follow thee, Lord, but first let me take leave of them that are at my house. And Jesus is like, whoa, well, you can't do both. You're going to probably have to choose here. You can't just keep looking backwards at your old life. And what does that mean? Because we know so many people enter the Christian life and then they go back to wherever they're from and try and evangelize those people, whether it's their family of origin, your neighborhood, your community, whatever that is. Um, Jesus is like, you shouldn't be looking back. You need to be looking ahead. So these are our characteristics of, of what we need here. We're going to need we're going to need to know that it's going to be challenging. We're not guaranteed any anything, any uh, prosperity, we'll say, in the future. We're not guaranteed that. The Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. So we know it may be rough. And then he's saying, you know, focus on the kingdom of God. The other things will take care of themselves if you focus on God. Maybe, maybe that's something there. And there's a no, I, I need to go back and take care. So the first one was, was the dead he wanted to take care of. And Jesus is like, go, go forth. Now he's saying, well, I have to go back and take care of the living. And Jesus is saying, go forth. So what's he telling us here? He's telling us it's not going to be easy. And he had just told us not that long ago to be as little children, as trusting little children. And I think perhaps these are all challenges, right? Do children worry normally <laughs> where they're going to sleep at night? Or do they trust that their parents are going to have that under control? And what does it do to children that don't have that trust, which may be very much founded? Think about that aspect as well. And he's saying, no, I need to go back and take care of things in my past. Jesus is like, future. And we can get that way. Have you ever been that person? Okay, so quite some time ago, I did not go to confession at my parish. I went on retreats, on homeschool retreats. And those lines could be quite long. And and especially, I think, for, for the homeschooling moms, um, when you have many children, you may be standing in line for quite some time and, and taking care of the little... The, the, I only have one son, but I, I'd seen it happen. They're waiting in line for so long and the littles have to run back and forth to the bathroom and you've got the ones in, in the confession line, but, but you need to be there the whole time. By the time it's your turn, you're out of time. I've seen that happen. So for whatever reason, um, the lines at homeschool conventions could be quite crazy. And it was the second or third year in a row. And I think I'd gotten the same priest every time. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've confessed all you need to stop. Turn your eyes to the future. Quit looking at the past. Those have been forgiven. You need to move on. I don't know. I was just always worried that I'd forgotten one or I hadn't done something. It's like that feeling when you leave the house for a vacation and you know you've left the stove on and you have to go back and check. It's like that feeling sometimes in confession, right? But we know that we have tried to remember all them. And, and if we do it in good faith and have made a good examination of conscience, I can look that up in the catechism later. If somebody knows it, put it down, um, that you're pretty much covered. Um, but if you happen to have forgotten one and you remember it later, you bring it up the next time, just as a matter of getting, checking all your boxes, but you don't drag in every sin you've ever committed month after month or year after year need to be looking ahead. Leave the dead behind. You move on. Those things are gone and done. You need to move on. We can, we can get stuck in that cycle, can't we? Where we're so busy worrying about things that we've done in our past that we're not building a future. Okay, you had that vice in the past and you made that sin in the past. What's the virtue you can now learn about and practice? 
build up your spiritual strength? How are we going to move forward and preach the kingdom of God? Go out and tell people, hey, I've been forgiven. It's amazing what Christ is doing in my life right now. Do you do that? Or do you worry second you leave that confession door? Oh, did I remember everything? Or do you start moving forward in great confidence that the Father has taken care of everything that you need? And there says, I will follow you, but first let me go back. <laughs> Go back to all those sins and address them one by one. So also we don't want to do that when we leave the confessional. You don't have, okay, I have my list of sins and now I'm going to work on this one and this one and this one in the morning. I'm going to work on this one and this one in the afternoon, and this one, this one at night. Now I have to check them all off by the time I get to bed. No, um, in the examine that you do daily, um, most people like to do it right before bed. But if you're someone who falls asleep doing that, you're probably going to want to pick another time of the day. Um, you end up picking one. One struggle doesn't necessarily have to be a sin. It could be just a temptation um, or, you know, a predominant fault. And you're going to pick one with Jesus and ask for all the graces that you're going to need to fight that the next day. And the next day you're going to focus on that one. We're not going to. I'm not going to hit them all at once because you, you know that doesn't work. You're dividing your attention. You're not attacking them all. So you're going to find, especially if there's a root one, we'll attack him. Go after that one. We're not going to keep looking back and, and second guessing God. We're going to move forward. Guess that's where I am today. Um, and this does all, again, this does all speak to childlike trust and faith and that willingness to go and learn new things. You should be excited for them as a little child is excited. You don't want to get so caught up in the why, 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 but say how. How, how, Lord. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you. That that little gratitude and joy that children have at the simplest of things. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> that sounds like it. Follow Jesus wherever he leads. And we know, we don't know where that's going to be. He doesn't know. Like the foxes have holes and the birds of air nests. But the Son of Man hath not with to lay his head. He doesn't need it. He's got complete faith and trust in God the Father. And we're hoping and praying that we all get that as well. Ah, friends, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. And may the good Lord bless you. And know me, Padre, Sophili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. <laughs>